<coughs> regular meeting of the park board of the commissioners agenda of order of business Wednesday September 2nd 2020 at 5 15 p.m. council hearing room one government center reading up the open meeting law pursuant to the open meeting law any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are, do and are deemed acknowledgeable and permissible. At this time I uh, want to call upon Commissioner Farias to do the Apology of Allegiance. Everybody please rise. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call of commissioners. Jeffrey Sylvia. Amber Burns. Victor Farias. Joseph De Silva. Commissioner Rigo is absent at this time. I'd like to recognize new commissioners, Amber Burns and myself, Joseph De Silva, as the new commissioners, and I also like to recognize the reappointed commissioners, Commissioner Jeff Sylvia, Commissioner um, Victor Farias, and Commissioner Helen Rigo. Also, I'd like to thank our former commissioners, Marcy Yankins and Joe Schulenberg, for their many years of service. Thank you. Acceptance of minutes of the 6, 10, 20, and 8, 20, 2020 minutes. Well, acceptance of the 6th, 10 meeting. Do I have a motion to accept? Motion to accept. Second it. Second. Roll call vote. Yes. 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 Acceptance of the August 20th, 2020 special meeting. Do I have Make a, a motion to accept that minutes? Do I have a second? second. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner De Silva? Yes. Citizen input. <coughs> I have one person for citizen input. We have three minutes under the uh, of a 15 minute period. Alan Emerald. With me is Mr. Souza. Yep. Yeah. You can come on up. Good evening. Name, uh, and, name and address, please. Uh, excuse me. Directed. My name is uh, Alan, A L A N, Amaral, A M A R A L. Uh, office address 226 Pleasant Street, Fall River. I'm an attorney at law, but that's not material to this. Uh, I'm here as a traditional, uh, an ordinary citizen. Okay. Um, can I continue? With? Yes. Okay. Uh, and with me is uh, Robert Souza. Yep. Uh, we are both members and are here this evening in our capacity. Uh, and as what members. is uh, Mr. Souza's address, please? Oh, oh Se sorry. 770 Highview Avenue, Somerset, Massachusetts. Okay. Thank you. And the last name is S O U S O. Okay. Is we, Mr. Souza going to speak or is Mr. Amor going to speak? Going to speak you I'll let you know. Unless they have questions, I can answer. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I if he's going to speak, being from Somerset, I make a motion to waive the rules, but if yeah. he's not going to speak, there's no reason to do that. All right, well, yeah, just in case, I would say, yeah. Make a motion to waive the rules. Have a second. Second. I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner yes. Farias. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Thank you. No Mr. Souza and I are both here in our capacity as members of the Fall River Order Sons of Italy in America, Sons and Daughters of uh, Italy in America. And we are here to urge the, uh, the program relative to this monument that has for many years uh, been located at the Holy Rosary Church or the Church of the Holy Rosary on Beatty Street near Columbus Park. Uh, in town here and uh, that at one time was the epicenter of the Italian community uh, Italian immigrants that uh, from 1872 forward 
emigrated to uh, that area of the city as well as the extreme south end and a little little colony at Maplewood. So uh, part and parcel of that has been uh, this monument which uh, was erected as near as we are able to discern from the known records in 1949, right after, uh, well not immediately after, but closely after the uh, close of hostilities in World War II. And the monument uh, stayed there for all these years, every year at uh, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, and similar holidays was uh, decorated by members of the Italian-American War veterans and members of the Sons of Italy. And uh, in recent years, with a, a change of hands of the church, uh, this monument was uh, dismantled, particularly the figure, which was a religious figure, that sat atop the monument. And uh, the granite base is now at rest in the city garage, where it waits a, uh, a new home uh, at the Veterans uh, Memorial Park, right by Centennial Park in Fall River. So uh, we are, we, when I say we, I mean the Sons of Italy and uh, associated members uh, urge the, uh, whatever is required to permit that to happen. Uh, there is uh, a good group of people that have gotten behind this effort from the Sons of Italy and the Italian-American War veterans, of which I am also a member. So um, with that, we respectfully ask your indulgence to so, so order or so permit, as the case may be, so that we can proceed accordingly. Have any questions? No, not for me. I didn't hear it. I came in late. Do I have any motions? No, it's not in the agenda, right? For the letter to come up. Okay, we'll wait for the letter. Come up. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, thank you. I do have some. Uh, I do have some photographs yes. to the extent that they may be helpful for conceptualizing the base of the monument. The top was a religious statue, and of course that can't be cited at the uh, mm -hmm. public public place. So uh, that is under discussion right now and research for an appropriate okay. top to this monument. Okay. Which we understand, by the way, or, or have reason to believe, might have emanated from Beatty's Quarry, okay. hence the name Beatty Street in Fall River, when it was uh, quarries were, were uh, predominant in the city. Okay. So, uh, with your you permission, can leave it on the table I can leave it here. Yeah, they yeah. have a picture of it in their packet as okay. well, but you can leave that there. All right, there are several here, so you'd have. Yes. Thank okay. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. Do I have any more people for citizen input? I close citizen input at 523 p.m. New business, I have an open meet and law complaint filed by Patrick Higgins. Public attendance at the August 20th meeting and vote to elect offices. Motion to refer to Corporation Council. Can I get a first? I'll make a motion to uh, refer to the Corporation Second. Council. Second. Second by Commissioner Rigo. Roll call vote, please. Jeff. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner DeSova? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Item B Farmers Markets request for Kennedy Park. Everybody have a chance to look at this? Yeah. So they want to move it up. Commissioner Farris, you have a question? Yeah, it says here that they want to move back or further into the to the park and Does everybody agree with them? With these rules? I do. Mm -hmm. okay. They're just moving in the same location, just but, yeah. mm -hmm. give people places to walk. All right. Make a motion, Do I I motion by uh, Commissioner Rigo. Can I have a second? Question. Oh, question, Ms. Sylvia. They're moving the location? No. Just further back. Just further, further back. back. Wonder, um, Where they are, they're just moving further okay. back. That's my understanding. They didn't say anything more about moving to any different lo location. 
Uh, where are you seeing that commission? It's, it's number 11. They just want to push it back to so yeah. one entrance um, for social distancing. Exactly. I think pretty much where they meet now is like on the pavement side. Yeah. People are standing, so they would just want to move it back more to do social distancing. So I have a, a motion to accept by Commissioner Rigo. Do I get a second? Second. Second by C Commissioner Burns. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner De Silva? Yes. And Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Item C, copy of the PowerPoint presentation of the Kathy Assad grant application. Anybody have a chance to read this? Because of the dates of this gone in yet? Or is it delayed because of the COVID? No, we had to submit it. Okay, this so it has been submitted? We've submitted it. Um, this is the same grant that we submitted last year. Yes. Um, so we did some revisions to it, and in order to meet the deadline, it had to go in. So the board would have to um, probably motion to accept um, the submittal, uh, accept and approve the submittal of the application, um, or accept the, the application. We have that pleasure. Everybody have any other questions? Mm. Motion to accept. Thank you. Second. Motion by uh, you, would you? Uh, Commissioner yeah. Burns. Second by Commissioner Rigo. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farris? Yes. Commissioner Julian De Silva? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Yep. Motion passes. Item D, bid award for the Chu Park Slade Street Renovation CDA project. It's for the little bit, right? Yes. I have a question. Yes, Commissioner Sylvia. United Fence Construction are they the people who did the fences with the other grants um, at Kennedy and Maplewood? Is that the same? Not fence that company? I know of. I don't believe so. That was through Mr. Gallagher, but I've, I've never heard of this company. Oh. Any other questions from the low bidder is Ari. Well, uh, I, I want to clear something up. Go ahead. The reason why I asked that, that question is. Last time we had fences put in at ball fields, we have an issue with one field. Mm -hmm. The fence wasn't put in the right place. There's a little league field, Kennedy Park, that the league paid to have their sprinkler system put in years ago. It's been there for, for years, and they, put, they actually made the field small. We have sprinkler heads behind the backstop at Kennedy Park that are now on the outside of the field. The league put those sprinklers in the league at the league's expense back in 19, I believe it was 90 or 91. It's been there for a while and they just went, on, went through with the project, didn't ask for any plans, didn't have to ask if there was any sprinklers or anything like that in that field and now that backstop is in the wrong place. That's the reason why I ask if this is the same fence company. Because if it was, then I have an issue with this. No, I was going to say, the, the bid is for the RAD, the low, oh, we, the low bidder. I understand that, and but I want to be sure that if I'm voting on something that's going to award a contract, the work is going to be done correctly. They're going to check with the city or the park department to see if where the new fence is going to go, if it's going to affect the sprinkler system or anything like that. So we don't run into this problem again, because to this day, two and a half years down the line, the issue has not still been addressed. And that league is unable to use their sprinkler system to help maintain their own field that they use 
provided by the city and it's unusable right now because we're gonna they're not gonna water the, the, the grass outside the field so you know I want to make sure that this is going to be done correctly put in the right place and the right questions are asked I yield can Mr. I Nefarious? ask uh, Mr. Perry a question? Would you like me to come down? No, you can. If you don't mind, sir. Commissioners, how are you? Not bad, how are you? Sir. Good. Okay, um, my question is, um, Commissioner Silvey just said about the company. Is it the same? It's not the same it's company? It's not the same company. Um, I just confirmed that. I made a phone call to make sure it's not the same company. I'm not going to call out the other company, but United is not the same company that did that fence the last time. Um, I know Nancy, myself, um, uh, the architect, and, and Mike Dion from CDA uh, have met down at True Park already, so I'm sure I don't, I don't want to speak for Mrs. Smith, but we'll, we'll keep a closer, close eye on this project to make sure that those things don't happen again, Commissioner Silver. So we'll do uh, due diligence to make sure that that doesn't happen. The previous project uh, to you know, inform Mr. Silver was not under no. our department, so we didn't have the jurisdiction to somewhat supervise it but we mr. Perry and I have ins been ensured that we will be a part of this project correct start to finish that's well, that I'd like to hear Jeff I'd I, like I, to, I appreciate that you're welcome I'd like to meet with you at some point let me know when you're available and we'll figure out what we got to finish doing at Kennedy I thought we had taken care of it but if we haven't then let's talk about how we can get that straightened out okay yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up with the president of the league okay sounds good thank you mr. Perry you're welcome appreciate it you're welcome Thank you. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to accept the low bidder RAD? I make a motion. Motion to accept. Commit. Uh, motion by Commissioner Farias, second by Commissioner Rigo. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. And Commissioner De Silva? Yes. Approval of uh, item so E. Awarding that. That's the awarding of the bid. Correct? Awarding of the bid. Thank you. Thank you. Item E. Approval of cemetery projects. I have our director of cemeteries, Chris, come down. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the first project on your agenda is a road repaving. Um, I'm asking for the support of repaving the road. Um, adjacent to the new expansion that we just completed that was approved and funded through perpetual care by this board um, two of the four companies responded providing bids um, both of those should be in your packets um, the lowest being uh, JR and Sons do we have any questions any commissioners that's still using the money from perpetual care correct is it additional appropriation? Yes, it would be an additional appropriation. Do I have a motion to accept? The warden of this I have a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Chris, which, which company do you recommend? Um, both of these companies have done work for the city. Um, I think Mr. Perry could attest better to uh, their craftsmanship, um, but I think both would be recommended by the city. Sorry, Commissioner, what was the question? We have two bids, mm -hmm. and I'm just looking for more of a professional opinion than I can. As far as the as far qualifications as of the companies? Yeah. yeah, no, they all do good work. Um, everybody, the, those two companies both do good work. One came in slightly under the other. Um, you know, so I wouldn't, if I saw a drastic difference in price, I'd be concerned. Um, but they're fairly close in price. I don't have any concerns with either contract if, if that's a better answer to your question. Yes. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to accept the, the low one. bidder? I'll make a motion to accept the low bid. JR. Can I have a second? Second. You want to accept and award the bid? Accept the award the bid of the low bidder JR and Sons for $18,358. Motion was uh, made by Commissioner Farias, seconded by Commissioner Rigo. 
Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner DeSilva, yes. Item two. The second um, project on your list there is the installation of a sign at Purchase Street Cemetery. Uh, the, the sign was purchased or funded rather through uh, CPA. That application was approved by this board um, at the time. This is just um, approving its um, location and final installation along Purchase Street. Any questions? There should be photos of the sign yeah, and location. Yes, there's okay. a, a poll uh, that the company provided. I'm not sure if it's on in the picture or not. Uh, no, that's a, a light pole. The yeah, the sign has its own pole, so along it would go in the cemetery itself okay. above that wall. Motion accepted by Commissioner Rigo. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Commissioner De Silva, yes. The third project is a supply donation and um, for the cleaning of the soldiers' monument, which is the monument um, that you see as soon as you enter the cemetery on Prospect Street. Um, an individual has um, acquired or um, has been given a promise from a company um, to provide the cleaning supplies um, for the soldiers monument cannons the uh, granite surround and also the smaller headstones within that uh, curved lot um, the company is providing enough of the cleaning agent to provide um, to do three applications, which they believe would be sufficient to clean and restore those headstones. Um, I think the only thing they're asking for in return is um, a blog post on their website about using their product to clean the memorial. Okay. And I have an example of that blog post <coughs> as well. Make a motion? Of a similar block. Any questions? <clears throat> Mission of Sylvia, any questions? No, this is a different. Okay. I did speak to Mr. Haig about this project as well. I don't think he had any objections. Um, he's here. No objections. Okay. All right. Do I have a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept the cleaning and the soldiers' monument. I'll second. Second. Second by Commissioner Rigo, first by Commissioner Farias. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner De Silva. Yes. Okay. The last project is a request for an Eagle Scout to do, um, or a Boy Scout to do his Eagle Scout project at Oak Grove Cemetery. Um, the young man would like to do uh, two different planting gardens. Um, as soon as you end, uh, before you enter the cemetery outside our gates, um, there's some grass there um, with some trees that have already been planted and well established. Um, historically, there were plantings there in the past. You can find some pictures online. Um, so he'd like to do that for his Eagle Scout project. Um, he will coordinate all the efforts to get all the supplies needed to, um, you know, follow through with that planting and then organize um, his scout troop to help him with the labor. Any questions? No, I think this is a great mm. motion to grant permission. Okay. Second it. Motion to grant permission by Commissioner Sylvia, second by Commissioner Farias. Roll call vote. Got a question. Nope, oh, question. I'm sorry. 
Do they have to get permission from the historical? I, I wouldn't think so. Um, it's just planting flowers and some shrubbery just outside of the cemetery as you approach the gates. Um, those plantings have been there. Um, and if I, if I could, we've yeah. done a, a couple of tree plantings um, in the cemetery, and that came before this board, mm -hmm. and that's where the approval came from. There had been no issues with historical after The cemetery that. is historical, right? Correct. So don't Correct. you, I think that we have to get permission from them. Oh, then you have to let them know. Well, again, we've done plantings at the cemetery before that didn't have to go before the historic commission, and they've never come back and, to us with any issue. And this is and on the outside, right? Outside the gate. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And, and just uh, an additional clarification. For previous projects, I've reached out to the historic commission in Boston um, and spoken with the person in charge of overseeing the historic cemeteries in Massachusetts um, and on the National Register. And the way in which those commissions would get involved in permissions and approvals is when you are modifying um, structures, so the buildings or the gate itself, um, the holding tombs that are there that were on the, uh, in the property when it was registered, and or if you are receiving historic tax credits, which wouldn't be the case in this scenario. Any other questions? Also. Okay, so I had a first by Commissioner Sylvia, commission, uh, second by Commissioner Farias. Roll call vote. So I'll, I'll allow the Boy Scout to do this. Boy Scout, right? Or Eagle Scout? Eagle Scout. Eagle Scout. Eagle Scout. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Any other stuff? That's it. Thank you. Thank I also uh, just want to make a comment. I want to thank uh, our director of cemeteries, Chris. I called him while he was on vacation when I first got a point uh, uh, on the Friday, and uh, he met me on his vacation at the cemetery to give me a tour of all, everything they're doing there and introduced me to the guys that were working there. They've come a long way since I worked there in the early 2000s, so I want to thank everything and thank the guys for everything they're doing. I, uh, one day I'll go with Nancy around to meet the guys in the park department. Thank, Thank you. you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, item F, Ruggles Park issues, vines and graffiti on retaining wall. This is all your pictures. Okay. <coughs> So everybody has pictures in uh, the packet. Yeah. I have a few questions. Is there anyone here for this item? Is there anyone here for this item? No, she sent a letter. Sent a letter. Okay, let me read the letter. Um, my only question is, they're just saying that it's impacting the structure of the wall. Has anyone been able to go? Well, the I went by. I'm the one that took the pictures. No, not necessarily the pictures, but to prove that the act, the wall structure is being impacted, yeah. like it's yeah. about to fall. I didn't buy. You're like a company. You're like, saying like a, yeah. a certified, like an engineer. Yeah, or not just someone looking at it. To date, not that I know of. Um, and to be honest, we sent the park workers there to see what they could do and look at those vines. It's a lot of poison ivy, so we haven't really done anything with it yet at this point, mm -hmm. because we would have probably three quarters of our staff out with poison <laughs> ivy so um, I put this in the board's packet so they would be aware that there was an issue mm -hmm. um, that we will have to address and if the board would like an engineer or some um, structural engineer to look at the wall before they make any kind of decision about removing or doing anything with the vine I guess they can make a motion and second to do that mm -hmm. if that's something that you want to do um, the other pictures that are included there with the swings, um, I've included a picture that shows we did add the mulch, so that's been mm -hmm. taken care of. And the Bicentennial Park tables have been removed, so these issues that uh, have been addressed by this woman. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but as far as that, if the board wants an engineer or someone to look at, they can motion in second before they take any action on the request. Okay. Well, Have any questions? Any commissioners? I have one. Commissioner Sylvia. As far as the graffiti, 
<laughs> My memory serves me. We had somebody come in. Maybe Mr. Perry can answer this. Um, in the past, when we had issues with graffiti around the city, we had either a company come in mm -hmm. or your department possibly may have had a machine to... So we've had a few different ways to handle that in the past. At one point, we do actually have a graffiti removal machine within our department. Unfortunately, um, it's, it's not something we can staff all that often. It hasn't been used in quite some time, so it takes some work. So what we've been doing in the interim is one company um, that we used to use. Um, I'm not even sure if he's in business. I think he may have sold it uh, to another gentleman. I'd have to look into that. But the sheriff's department has also assisted us in the past uh, with graffiti removal. So, again, as Ms. Smith said, if they, you know somebody would like to make a motion to examine the wall and inspect it to ensure that it is structurally, um, there are structural deficiencies due to this, we can do that. And then I think we'd have to get an idea of what look what it looks like underneath. Um, as far as how much graffiti and what it says, because I would caution that once you take the greenery down, whatever that wall says as far as graffiti is going to be up there until we can get it clean. So I think a coordinated effort between removing the shrubbery and making sure that that day or the next day we can get the graffiti off, I think that's the best way to probably handle this. So if we are going to take it down, if that's the way the board rules, we're ready to take the graffiti down immediately because we're just creating another problem at that point that m people will complain about as well. And also, Jeff, with the removal of that graffiti based on how they remove it, you could be worsening the structural integrity of that wall because if mm -hmm. they're sandblasting it or whatever. I, I do feel that, that that's probably a good idea um, and maybe in the board's best interest um, that we get somebody to professionally look at the wall and, and give us a, their, their word or, or their opinion as far as to what kind of structural damage there has been because that may lead into another conversation about that particular wall as well. Uh, again, it is a historic park, it's an Olmstead Park, so if there is something wrong with that wall, we may have to do work that could be of a significant nature. Um, so we need to know that before we really start going at this, yep. you know. I have one other question. Go ahead, Commissioner be Burns. Um, you had mentioned there's poison ivy on it, or that you guys, is it for most of the wall that's covered, or is it just one port? Like, um, how much? I'm, I'm, if I told you, I would probably yeah. not. It was my foreman that went out because okay. I asked him to look at the wall, and he said, right now it's got yeah, so, kind of and, poison ivy and on it. And with poison so. ivy and the way we take that stuff down, really, um, honestly, I think even if it was one particular section, once you really start to disturb it, mm -hmm. it spreads yeah. it, into the air, and that, that's another concern, and that's where it kind of sticks to people. Um, so if. Again, um, an engineer or, or somebody inspects it, says it is structurally sound and you can take that down, you can work with it, um, we probably want to go there and spray it down with uh, poison ivy killer first, get as much of that knocked down as we can, and then. Mm -hmm. We have any uh, question, Commissioner Farris? No other questions? Mm -mm. I motion to have um, somebody go on and inspect it. I'll second that motion. Second. Commissioner Burns uh, uh, makes a motion to have a professional engineer go out and check the wall. Commissioner Faria seconds. Have a roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner yes. Farias. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Item G, request by Ray Haig to install benches in Griffin Park, uh, Private Francis Green, and Veterans Memorial Park. Motion to, oh, right. Do we want Mr. Haig to come down or? No. He doesn't need to. No. He doesn't need to. Okay. Okay. Motion to accept. I have motion one, to one question, one Commissioner question. Sylvia. Uh, it's going to be the same benches as everywhere else. That is correct. To keep our consistency. Mr. Haig yeah. has been on that point since day one, and he's expressed that to the groups that are involved as well, right. that there is one specific bench that is required for all parts. I appreciate that. You're Thank welcome. you. Yeah. Motion to grant permission. Second that motion. Okay. Roll call vote, Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farris. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner De Sylvia, yes. Item H, request from Ray Hay to relocate the Veterans Monument from Columbus Park to the Veterans Memorial Park near the gazebo area. 
There's a picture in the packet. Make a motion to why, what, Ray, what, what's, the, uh, what's the reason for moving this monument? The church was sold, Commissioner, and the church gave us that monument for relocation. And the families are okay with this? Mr. It's mostly in the custody of well, the, uh, yeah, just, yeah. the sons and daughters of Italy, and uh, they've approved that. They're working with us on the city on the project. They're putting their own funds into it, and um, it, it's a good project. And I think within your packet, Commissioners, you have a letter from the administration. It's really a request from the yes. uh, mm -hmm. administration, yep. which I represent. So. Yep. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to accept? Motion. Commissioner Farris. Motion. Motion to accept. Second. Second. Commissioner Burns. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farris. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner De Silva. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Gentlemen, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Guess what? They don't stop taking monuments from Walmart Box. Item I, letter from Glen Hathaway, building inspectors, condition of North Park Comfort Station building. Yeah. We have a letter. Yep. Yeah. we have any questions? Uh, I just have one question. Commissioner Sylvia. Uh, as far as that building, North Park is an Olmstead Park, right? Yes. Is that building on any kind of historic registry or? Yes, my recommendation to the board would be to, before anything is done to that building, to ensure that you get something from the Massachusetts Historic Commission in writing. I know Mr. Hathaway has the right to us. I think um, Mr. Uh, Gallagher had said he has the right because of the condition of the building, but I would still let the Mass Historic know so that it's not something. We can't put the building back after we take it down. So. Yeah. Just I mean, I, as, I understand. as a precautionary measure, I would ask that question. I, I, I understand Mr. Hathaway's uh, concerns, and you know, according to his letter, uh, it is a hazard, and um, you know, we, we've dealt with this building a lot over the years mm -hmm. that I've been here, and uh, you know, due to the conditions. I just want to make sure we're not violating any historical laws or policies or anything. So I will make a motion that we send a letter to the Mass Historical Society regarding that building. Mass and if they commission. have no issue with it, and it, you know the city gets a letter saying they don't have an issue with it, then part of that motion will be to take that building down. So I spoke, I just want to give you a, just a yep. point of information. So I spoke to Mr. Gallagher before I came in today. Um, he has spoken to them. Uh, the letter that was going to be sent to them from the city side of things, um, <coughs> some of the details in that letter were, were wrong. So that letter needs to be resubmitted. But they're in that process. So verbally, he has spoken to them and they are okay with it. But I, I, I agree until you, you, know, you get a confirmation mm -hmm. from them. So, but he is actively working on that. So hopefully that will be sooner Mr. rather than Mr. Gallagher sending the letter? Uh, it's coming from, um, uh, uh, yeah, well, um, licensing. Uh, Ms. Ayash is going is, is preparing the letter and going to forward it to the Historic Commission. Uh, she had done it. Mr. Gallagher looked it over, but she had referenced the wrong project in the letter. So uh, the, the right project needs to be referenced. I request that once that letter is done, that it be forwarded to the board. Certainly. And the response also from the Certainly. state. Certainly. I will ensure that that happens. Thank you. You're welcome. Is that the Boston Commission that he wrote to or the city one? I believe that. We have a city the, board. Yeah, I think it's the Boston one. Uh, I would, I'll would. i find out for you, Commissioner Rico. Right. Absolutely. No, my motion is there a is preference? Uh, just to be my, clear. My motion is to send it to the state. I would say both. Both. I'd say both. Oh, oh. Okay, I'll amend my motion to include both. Include both? Yes, both. Yep. City and the state. 
Okay. Uh, I'm sure one supersedes the other, but just yeah, so I think that we've one had is, that debate in the past, yes. though. So the, right. the, 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 but there so sometimes no there's some out, confusion. This way, everybody is aware of it. If they are, if they at least see the letter, it's not something anyone can, in the end can say. Well, no one told us yeah. about it. The and city will know, and the state. Yeah, and I think you know maybe for just future reference for the board's um, help. Uh, maybe we get a letter that states that Mr. Hathaway's opinion on the fact that if it's a hazard, he has the right, whether it's historic or not, you guys will get that so you can file it away. So anything like this comes up in the future, there's something that's a hazard that needs to come down and, and it's historic, then we can do that and it doesn't hold that process up. Because God forbid, if something seems to be a danger, something happens, we could all be liable for that. That yeah. particular thing. So I I'll, have, I'll try to see I if that's one question. So I Mission noticed Burns? how he had said it's being occupied by homeless people at the moment. Is there something that's roping it off? To yeah, so we continue to board it up. Um, yeah, they've borrowed their way in. Yeah, if, we've if, filled if, it with cement. We've but okay. unfortunately, Commissioner Burns, if, if some of them would use their um, their, their ingenuity for for better <laughs> purposes, they they probably wouldn't be homeless. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they find unique ways to get into okay. just about anything. But we make every attempt to okay, ensure just that just to cover yep. ourselves. Yep. Yeah, something absolutely. absolutely. So, so Jeff, can you please explain your motion again? So, is, are you tabling uh, this until no. you receive that information? Or? I'm making a motion that the building be taken down, pending approval from the Mass Historical Society. In the city's historical side. So nothing is to be done with the building until, until we, we get the yeah, notification. Once you receive that, yes. we can go ahead with it, though. Yes. Okay. Does Excellent. that information have to come back to the board for a vote before we do that, or well, just let us know? No, I would say no if we vote okay. on it tonight. I just want to clarify. No, no, I understand. Just let us know. He's, he think he just said he wanted to have it forwarded to us. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I would like to see it forwarded. The, 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 both letters. The letters. Both letters. The letters and the response forward yes. to the, the request board. and the response. Mm -hmm. Yes. Certainly. Okay, so there we have a motion. Commissioner Sylvia is a motion. Second. Yes, that's a motion. Seconded by Commissioner Rigo. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner De Silva, yes. Item J, request from the Mount Hope Lodge, adopt and clean Lafayette statue area. Have any questions? Mm -hmm. Just so the board knows, we don't have the adopted area any, anymore, mm -hmm. but if this gentleman wants to come in and clean, we have no objection. All he would have to do is send an email and notify the board. We put it, he can do it on a quarter, because it's locked, so we would have to open it up for them. So we don't have a, a, as long as no one's getting paid and they're doing it voluntarily, there's usually not an issue with that. But they just need to let us know they're going to be on the pre park premises. Is this to clean the entire statue or just the base? I think they, they do like the paper cleanup, you know, trash, Bushes, you know. So they're not going to do anything to the statue, not chemicals, anything or anything like that that's going to harm the integrity of the statue. Or I have. It says brush trimming and landscaping right. inside the fenced area. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I, I asked that because he also mentioned the Freemason, so that's why I asked that question. I think we that's, can put I think that that's something there. we can make. We sure. can address that with them, letting them know that they cannot do yeah. anything to the statue itself. Do I have a motion to accept? Yes. Commissioner Rigo accept. A motion to accept. Second. Second. Commissioner Burns. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Commissioner De Silva, yes. Item K. Brentland Park Soccer Field Electricity Course. You have the, in front of you in your packet the um, last year, let me start this way, last year we took back the electricity from leaks um, that utilized that Brooklyn Park because there were some issues with that. Um, as we monitored the bill, we noticed that one of the months, um, you know, we had like just a normal fee and then one of the months it looked as though individuals were utilizing the electricity, which meant that um, someone either didn't turn back their key or, you know, because at the end of the year for the new commissioners, everyone has to turn back in their key. 
and I obviously you know some people say they lost it but came to a situation where rather than uh, accuse anyone of keeping the key I just had the locks changed on the door that allows to the electrical panel and the following bill went back down to sixty dollars so um, that's something that this board will have to address when it comes to the use of lighting at Britland Park because there are multiple leagues that use that one field because it is a turf field and we only have the one soccer field so that's something that this board will have to address on how we're going to move forward with that um, it will probably have to be put in ordinance of a charge that they have for using the lighting since the other leagues do pay for their lighting so if the um, I don't know if the board is going to deal with that there are some fall ball leagues that are utilizing it um, and they have asked for lights so the sooner the board probably puts in motion an ordinance um, that we can maybe work with the city clerk's office on um, as to what we will charge as a fair price um, for these individuals using the lighting um, that's something that the board will have to consider so I don't know if the board wants to um, I don't even know if you can act on that because it's not really on your agenda tonight but we can put that agenda item on next month, next month. Um, mm -hmm. because come the spring we're going to have multiple leagues if this COVID situation is cleared up there are a good four or five leagues that utilize that field and we'll have to deal with that so um, if the board wants to have that on the next agenda I just wanted to, the board to know that we did change the lock rather than confront any league and, and it was the easiest thing to do to stop the electrical costs. I have one we're question. put that on the agenda. Commissioner I, Burns has a question. Sorry. Um, so just because I'm new to this, so is there a possibility to be able to put timers on the lights? So I've looked into that as well. Um, and, I, and I do have some pricing on that, but the only thing is they still have to access the building to turn the light on and even if the light is on a timer there's still a cost involved so you have to come up with what that fee mm -hmm. would be for that particular four hours or mm -hmm. um, and in the summertime it would be different because they wouldn't need the lights until 8 30 like mm -hmm. 8 30 to the maximum they could be there with a permit is 10 mm -hmm. but when you're talking fall you're talking from 5 to 9 or 5 to 10 that's different that's going to be a much different cost mm -hmm. for that particular so the only reason why I ask is because I played sports forever and there was always some sort of a system where they knew when the games were mm -hmm. and they would automatically I don't know how they would somehow computerize it they could set the time like they knew what the schedule was they can set the time for the lights it goes on at a certain time and it shuts off it's not necessarily something someone would manually have to turn on and it'll shut off after a little while um, I think those are different kind of timers. Yeah, that, so, and, yeah. and Ms. Smith and I have been working on this, so there's probably a lot of different options. There will be a cost associated to that, obviously, mm -hmm. but um, th there may be a system where you have an electronic timer that you can set. So, in essence, you know, m Monday or sun over the, you know, on Friday, Ms. Smith will know what next week's schedule is. Mm -hmm. Um, and she can set certain days, certain times, mm -hmm. different days, different yeah. times, and for different durations. Um, the only concern with that would be if, you know, weather for some reason was to call off a game or cancel mm -hmm. a game. Those lights are going to turn on. Um, so we'd have to be able to maybe even if, and, and again, I think the more intricate the system, the more the cost Absolutely. is going to be. Um, but I do have another idea that I haven't had a chance to talk mm -hmm. to Ms. Smith about as far as them having to access the actual building. It's possible maybe we can put a, a knock box on the outside of the building that they'll have a key just for that and then the timer off he did speak about that I did speak right. to him about that uh, my concern with that was the vandalism well, of it understood so. but you know yeah. so there are some options that we're working on as far as the ordinance you know if 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 a company or an individual or a league would need to reimburse the city for a one-time expense those are things that can happen but this will be a recurring mm -hmm. event um, we won't know what that fee will be for each night one night it may run fifty dollars one night it may run a hundred dollars depending on the duration uh, so we have to put something in that says each night is going to be this amount and oh, then perfect. that can we will pay the bill as a city and that will be reimbursed to us um, so that way we want to make sure we cover our costs uh, and that it's fair across the board for those other leagues that do already pay for their bills 
these leagues will also have to be responsible for that. But to Ms. Smith's point, you know, the sooner we get this done, the better, because until we can get those things in place, we are going to be paying that bill. Yep. Do I have a motion to accept this? Yeah, motion to accept. Mm -hmm. uh, the electrical, I would say that table. the table motion is to put it on your next agenda. Yes. Put it on the motion and uh, put it on our next agenda for October's meeting. Uh, motion by Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Seconded by Second. Commissioner Burns. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Commissioner Sylvia, yes. Mm. Item L, updated COVID protocol and regs of mass.gov. Uh, Commissioner Do you have any questions on this? Mm -hmm. I just have a concern. Go ahead, Commissioner um, Sylvia. It clearly says under section four, the last paragraph on the page, on that page, which is page, I don't know. Um, but referring to baseball and softball, batters must wear facial coverings while at bat. And it goes on to talk about lacrosse and hockey and other sports. What, what, pa what page was that? What um, page is that? I have to call them. Page seven and eight. Seven and eight. Protective equipment and facial covering for all the yeah, items. Is it the live one? At the bottom. Oh, no, the latest yes. one, which is uh, oh, okay. August, uh, amended on August 13th and it's effective it's August 17th. Right At the bottom of that page on the last line, it mentions uh, facial coverings and it says baseball slash softball batters must wear facial coverings while at bat. Then it mentions lacrosse and hockey. Um, then the next line, next paragraph, coaches, staff, referees, umpires, and other officials are required to wear facial coverings and maintain social distancing of six feet from players, coaches, spectators, and other persons at all times. Being involved in baseball in the city, um, I know literally baseball has come out with guidance on the COVID and, and returning to play, which if any of the commissioners want it, I've sent it to Ms. Smith. Um, so it is in the park office. And if I can provide a copy also. Um, but this is state, coming from the state, and as you know, in our pack, there's two of them. One dated July 24th, when the return to play was becoming official, and then updated as numbers changed and whatever by the governor and, uh, you know, the staff, lieutenant governor and that committee. My concern is this league's not doing it. Unfortunately, a couple of leagues that are not doing it are not Little League involved, so I don't have any control over them. Um, I think this is an issue. This is not something that we came up with. This is the state, and obviously it's for everyone's protection. So I may have an issue with uh, grant and permits if people are not going to follow the guidelines provided by the state. And I know that's not going to be popular. And, you know, I'm used to being public enemy number one when it comes to baseball. So it is what it is. Um, I enforce the little leagues to do it. So every other league in this city that's using our fields should be following the rules. And if they're not going to follow the rules, then again, I will have a problem granting permits. Thank you. Any other questions? 
What is the pleasure? The board. Yeah, good. Motion to accept. Accept and place on file. Accept and place on file. Motion accept and place on file. Commissioner Sylvia, uh, second. Second. Commissioner Farias, roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. Yes. Commissioner Sylvia, yes. Item M, fall ball league request. Maplewood Park. There's a bunch of things. What I did was give the board copies of the fall ball um, request that I have received. That's not saying all the information is in. They need liability policies, they need uh, rosters, but I wanted the board to be aware that these are the fall ball permits that have been sent in. Now some of them do address lights, so I don't know if the board wants us to see if the leagues can manipulate their schedules to play during the day, more so than at night at Britland Park, that particular park that we were sp speaking about, but um, this is basically the ones that I have received so far. I don't know what you saw we've never done before. Is there any new ones, Nancy? I don't notice any. Um, no, the, the Nor'easter was the one that used to use soccer on Thursday nights. They've asked for a couple of different nights now since other leagues I have told me they're not playing. Um, I have Maplewood for baseball, and there is a... Um, Little League National. Little League has asked for a permit. Um, there's also a, a men's league for the Brooklyn Park. Um, some of them provided liability policies from when they submitted in the spring, but the policies are good for a year. So if it is with that particular league, then they have their liability policy. What we would need now are rosters and schedules for their plan of play. <clears throat> and if you are gonna ask again for the COVID plan, but I would assume they're gonna use the same COVID plan as they did in the spring, unless it's a new league, which the Nor'easter soccer did include a COVID plan because they have not applied, because soccer was at a high risk before last month. Mr. Chairman, uh, I have a question. Yes. From Mr. Smith. Mr. Sylvia. It's for the football club. Yeah. Who are they? That's a, a men's league. They played there last year before. It's not the men's league that is associated with the um, local clubs that used to be the loser. But yeah. that's a different. That is a different league. And they're aware of our regulations. Yes, they actually had a permit um, last year, I believe, as well. They're not. A fo they're actually a soccer league. They just call themselves Fall Over Football. They're a soccer league, but European football. Any other questions, I, Commissioner Sylvia? I hate to <laughs> dominate, but yeah. um, the problem I have is not really a problem, a concern. Uh, Again, I mentioned the facial coverings. Uh, I don't have a problem using the COVID plans at least submitted in the spring. But the issue that I'm looking at here is these leagues clearly know, unless you're a new league, what is expected. They received a letter from this board with the requirements to get a field permit. I don't understand why some paperwork is not complete. I understand that we didn't issue permits in the spring because we didn't know what was going on with the state and the restrictions. Now that 
things have changed and the restrictions have been eased a bit and they're able to play games and that's all they can play is games. They can't play tournaments according to the updated mm -hmm. stuff from the state. So, you know, there's a request in here for a tournament. I have a problem with that because it's in violation of the state. I don't have a problem with tournaments. I have a problem with people not following the rules. These Again, the state rules are not our rules. We're forced to enforce them. So I have a problem with a tournament. As far as just kids playing games, those restrictions have been eased. I don't have a problem. But as far as this board is concerned, I don't think a permit should go out to anybody until the proper paperwork is received. And I'll make a motion to that effect, and I'll give them a two-week deadline, since we are in September already, to come up with their paperwork. You know, I don't, I, I don't want to hear an excuse about rosters because the kids who play four ball are kids from your league. All you got to do is find out who's playing and who's not. It's a list of names that come to this board. I don't care if they play for the Red Sox or the Yankees or whatever team they're on. I want to see a list of who we're letting use our fields. Because in the past, we have had issues with out of towners using our fields and getting permits and charging money to play in tournaments and making money off this board or off our fields. And I don't want to go backwards again. So my problem is get your paperwork in. My motion would be within two weeks or you're not getting a permit. That's simple. And that's complete paperwork, which includes certificate of solicitation, um, schedules, rosters, COVID plans, etc. If you applied in the, in the spring, there's no reason why you can't have this stuff now. So that, that's my motion, that we can give them permits as long as they get their paperwork in order in the park office by uh, a two-week two date. Two weeks would be the 16th. That's fine with me. Okay. Hey, uh, motion uh, made by Commissioner Sylvia that they would have to have their paperwork all turned in by to Mrs. Smith by the 16th of September 2020 to get a permit issued. Do I have a mo uh, motion by Commissioner Sylvia, seconded by Commissioner Real. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Rio. Yes. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Now a question, uh, Commissioner Sylvia. Yep. Did you want to still grant anybody permits if we're talking tournaments or not? Not a tournament. According to state regulations, they can't have tournaments. I make a comment just yep. a little bit. Um, I would suggest that in the letter you sent to these leagues giving them that two week that you um, also mention that their new COVID plans, because whatever they put in in the spring mm -hmm. obviously has changed yes. since, um, that they must follow the, the minimum guidelines that the state requires. Um, any violation of that may uh, result in, you know, the revocation of their permit mm -hmm. so that they understand. And it also gives Ms. Smith, myself, and this board the ability to, to pull that permit mm -hmm. um, without an argument. Uh, they would be well aware that that's the penalty uh, for not following it, um, you know. And then that way, at least you have some backup if that does happen. We have put that in our Okay. Letter. All right. Just wanted to make sure. You want to amend your motion? Changed. I'll amend my motion. It's in the letter, to It's in the letter. Okay. We do say, if you want to amend your motion to include it again, I I'll, have no problem. I'll amend the motion to include that information. <laughs> and also no today. tournaments. No <laughs> tournaments. And they are expected, no, not expected. They are demanded to follow state law. They need to submit a new, Form. an updated COVID, COVID plan. An updated COVID, COVID plan, yes. Yeah. I mean, and there's no the no market. tournament. So, well, yeah, but so. some of it's changed. So again, the COVID situation is fluid, right? So as you see, July's was different than August's, and that may change. There may be some lax restrictions where they can do more later. I think what it should read, or in my personal opinion, would be um, the most um, up-to-date mass COVID 
uh, restrictions. That's what it has to reflect. So as those change, their COVID plans need to be changed. So, I mean, obviously it'd be easy. It's cut and paste. You, you add something, you take something out, reprint it and submit it to the board. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. But as things change, I think each league should be required to submit that plan again to you. That way you're aware that they have paid attention, that they realize that the, the state's uh, restrictions have changed yeah. and that they've actively been paying attention to that. Because some of them will just say, oh, well, I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. I think you need to make sure you hold them accountable to stay up to date with what the state's new recommendations are. I would hope they do that on their own, but we know how it goes sometimes. Do you mind your motion to all of that? <laughs> yes, sir. I, I do have one question. I apologize. Commissioner so are we sending that letter to everyone that it's a league, and then for the one that wants the tournament, are we telling them that they Can are I not have. approved? I think the board needs to to deny the tournament, make the a tournament. motion in a second to deny, so that this way it's not anything that okay. we're doing it's not even on a question. our own. It's something that so, is based so, on the regulations. I'll make a motion. Gonna, let me let me do the first one first. So I make a mo uh, I'm going to have uh, Commissioner Sylvia amend his motion for the first one to send everybody that letter for two weeks and to update all their COVID plans and that to the most recent ones. Commissioner Sylvia, I'll amend that motion. Action. Seconded by Commissioner Rigo. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farris? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Commissioner De Silva? Yes. I now ask for a motion to deny the tournament. I'll make a motion that we deny the tournaments for Second. Com uh, Commissioner Farris makes a motion to deny. Commissioner Rigo seconds it. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farris? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Commissioner De Silva? Yes. Excuse me, who was the second? I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner Rigo. Rigo. Okay. And Commissioner Farias made the motion. Yep. Okay. So no tournaments per... No tournaments. The per state guidelines. Regs. What is it? No tournaments per the mass.gov regulations. Correct. Okay. Okay. Item N. Opinion from our Corporation Council, control of the monument and boards, request power duties and power and, and park board authority. Any questions from anyone? That's just information that was requested just by this board before. Information. Um, those are the responses, so the board has the information and everyone is up to date on what they requested and what was received in return. Make a motion place on file. Motion, uh, motion to be placed on file by Commissioner Farias. And any second? Second. Commissioner Burns seconds it. Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia? No. Commissioner Far uh, Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Commissioner De Silva, yes. Item O, ball field light pole survey. We all have our... So basically at the end of June, yes. um, we had a company come in and do a light pole survey for many of the wooden light poles throughout the city. Um, and they responded back with um, this report. Um, it does indicate that many of the poles have reached their life expectancy and some have lived beyond that. Um, so we are now looking into the removal of these poles. I do know a couple of the leagues um, have expressed interest in applying for CPA funds for some of the replacement of these polls. They've sent information which will be distributed to this board at your next meeting, and they've asked to appear for you at the next meeting. Um, but this is something that we would have to um, get additional funding for from the administration um, in, a, in a budget. But at this point, we wanted the board to be aware of this, the concern that we have 
regarding this significant amount of polls. I don't know if Mr. Perry wants to add anything to that. Yeah, so, I mean, again, uh, as Ms. Smith said, we did the survey. Uh, a couple of things spurred that. Um, I think it came back a, a little more significant. Uh, the number of polls that would need to be taken down or replaced is, is, is higher than I think we thought it would be. Um, I am pursuing funding avenues. Uh, right now, I think everybody's aware of the financial climate the city's in. Um, so there's a couple of variables that really need to be considered. Um, there are some parks where the lights really aren't used. So do we take those down, put them back up? Or do we just take them down and leave them down because they're really not used? Um, you know, if we can't get total funding to replace and take down all of the poles, uh, maybe we prioritize the worst of them that, are, you know, we would have this consultant come back in and say, okay, these are the ones that absolutely need to be done now see what that cost would be and try to find that funding source revenue. We are actively working on that, um, but we wanted, Nant, Ms. Smith and I wanted to make sure that the board is aware um, that this is an issue uh, and it's something that's going to be becoming, coming before this board again in the near future. Do have a mo uh, any questions? I have a motion to accept this report. A motion to accept. Second. Commissioner. Commissioner Rio making a motion to accept. Commissioner Sylvia seconds it. I have a roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia? Yes. Commissioner Burns? Yes. Commissioner Farias? Yes. Commissioner Rigo? Yes. Commissioner De Silva? Yes. Six department updates. We've pretty much given you, we've given you the updates during the the meeting for the most part if there was something um, that as far as these light poles go I did solicit some pricing they go anywhere from um, probably five hundred to eight hundred dollars a pole for removal yeah. only and that would be if we took the poles away because of this creatine in these poles or whatever so there would be something where they wouldn't take them away. They would bring them to like a DPW or wherever we needed to do. So a lot of these costs uh, were still in the process of getting mm -hmm. so that we can go after, you know, actively seek a, a dollar amount to. Right, and the lights that, that are attached to those poles, some of them are, yeah. are no good anymore. Right. So, you know, some of them are. Uh, could we save some and, and put them back up with a brand new pole? Is that worth it? Um, if we're going to replace the pole and the light, should we replace both? Again, all those costs need to be factored in and figured out before we can see how far we can take that. We may get to a point where I we need a, to put the old lights back up because we just don't have funds for new ones. I have a question if we can check. I know you guys are doing all your avenues, checking everything mm -hmm. for costs, and I might be able to save money, in, especially for taxpayers and everything right now, is if you have a ball field that has six lights, six poles, you might be able to downsize with three with new LED fixtures and that, that might brighten that up a lot than what's up there now. Yeah, that was part of the discussion as well, that there were newer light style lights now mm -hmm. that, and, mm -hmm. and I think Ms. Smith used the same thing, where you went mm -hmm. from six to four. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are going to be more expensive than your traditional, but yeah. over the long run, it's going to save you money yeah. and it's going to save you some cost as bad as erecting them. So yeah. that is a consideration as well. And the other thing is these light poles, I've known, uh, have been here since, what, the 80s? Some of them, I think. So before, maybe some before, before. Yeah. I think it's a small price to pay. Mm -hmm. the, God forbid, some comes down and hits a kid or something. Mm -hmm. It's going to cost us the, the city a lot more money. Agreed. To pay this, and you probably get a forty-year investment out of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is why we wanted to make sure this board was available, um, yeah. that that it was aware mm -hmm. at your very first meeting. Um, yeah. you know, since we've gotten back to a quorum. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as departmental, if Ms. Smith is done, I just want to echo something uh, Commissioner De Silva had said with Chris and, and the work that he does at the cemetery um, and, and, and the, the respect I have for him and appreciation for the work that he does. Uh, something that we'll be bringing again before the board is something we've been working on. Chris is doing the lion's share of that work for me, but the expansion project. Um, just letting you know that that is moving on. Uh, we're getting, you know, plan designs and ideas from them. Um, so, you know, lest anybody think we're forgetting about that or it's gone by the wayside, we are working on it. And that's, that's probably, a, you know, one of the most significant projects that cemetery's seen in, in quite some time. So I th I'm excited about it. I think it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do 
a lot to keep the life of that cemetery going. Um, once we're done with that, I'm hoping that we won't ever have to worry about expanding that cemetery in our time periods anyway. I know mine, some of you are younger than, than I, so Chris likes to say he'll be around a lot longer than I am. So, um, But I think I think it's it's definitely a, a positive thing, and I just wanted to echo those statements. Uh, Chris does a great job, and I appreciate the work. Just as say, well as Ms. Smith, same thing. Absolutely. Uh, I just wanted to say, too, while I was there getting my tour, uh, Chris did show me the new expansions yeah. and that and the pri and future things. And uh, like I said, I think it looks great and everything. Yep. And if we can do everything to expand the life of the expectancy yep. of the Oak Grove and everything. Just updates on that. The, yep. um, the, the company that we engaged has completed uh, topographical surveys and boundary surveys for that area. Um, they've calculated that it's about an acre of land that we can utilize for grave space. And we've started some discussions on preliminary layouts that we can present to the board in the coming meetings. So there has been some significant progress on that um, in the short time that the contract's been approved and signed. Okay. All right. All right. Number seven, commissioner inquiries. Uh, John, who, who cuts down the trees? We know there's stumps. That would be Mr. Perano's department, tree department, uh, under, under the park. cemeteries and trees. We got, so we got one in a park that looks terrible. It's oh. this high, stump this high. It's got to be, you know what I'm talking about. We, right? have, we have a lot oh, of them. I'm going along the fire station, too, up on the on that, I mean, that, we have a trunk stump, but don't we have a stump? Trump grinder, stump? yeah. Yes. So as far as the ones by the fire station, you know, um, Mr. Gallick is the department cut that down. It's buildings and grounds or facilities maintenance, what they call it now. So he, he cut those down. So I'd look for him and work with him to try to get that done. Uh, the problem with the stumps, Counselor, and I, want, I mean, uh, Commissioner, I want everybody to be aware. Look, Chris and his guys do a tremendous job with what he has. Uh, you have six employees in the cemetery. Um, the tree department as it's constituted. Five, oh, yes, we have one out. So that's five. And the tree department as it's constituted, you know, it, the, the words tree department are said quite a bit. It's actually two people, and we only have one of those positions filled because the requirements for the second position, um, there are some licenses required for that, and you really, it's tough to get a candidate who's willing to work for that kind of pay with those said licenses. So we're doing the best we can. Unfortunately, we do go outside um, to private contractors to do stump removal as well. Um, but there are a number of them of, uh, across the city that need to be worked on. So well, this one here, if it's not even the stump all the way down, like go down and shorten it down. I mean, okay. this is we'll right, definitely right look now at we, that. We, we're doing everything on safety priority because that's terrible. really the only terrible. thing we can do. Yeah. Um, with the one person on staff and the funding we have for outside contracted work, so a lot of the times the stumps do get left behind because it's an added cost and. Um, it's not as quick as you think to remove a stump. Um, do, you, do you mind if I ask where that one is, Council the Commissioner? The green. The green. On, the, when he uh, cut the which tree green? down, he left the stump about this high. What which green? green? Which green, Council? On Highland Avenue. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I know what you're talking the one that about. fell during the storm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I understand now where it is. It just happened I was there okay. when he was cutting down a tree. We'll definitely take a look at it. I know Chris had talked to me about that, and I met the gentleman that's working and the one employee that does that, and yeah. they have to pull one of the other guys exactly. to assist them. Uh, last week, I had uh, called uh, Brenda and, uh, when Chris was out that I had seen a FedEx truck over here on North Main Street take out a half a branch mm. and knock it down on Bank, Bank Street. Called her, she said she was gonna have the guys come by because it was laying in Bank Street. Mm. This morning I called Chris that there was another big one that was right on, between all the trees, right on uh, Plymouth Avenue, just right a little up between Avenue. Animal Instinct and the Flatiron Building. Okay. That the whole route was coming uh, right yeah. out and I was afraid that that was gonna fall into the attic. It's in front of the modern, modern printing. Yes. yes. Yeah, I've seen that one as well, yeah. yeah. So I know Chris said he was gonna send the guys to look at that. Okay. So. They are doing a good job, so thank you. All right. So, any other inquiries from commissioners? We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Commissioner Rigo, second. Uh, second. Commissioner Farias. <coughs> Roll call vote. Commissioner Sylvia. Yes. Commissioner Burns. Yes. Commissioner Farias. Yes. Commissioner Rigo. <coughs> Commissioner Silva. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. <coughs>